Good evening and thank you so much for coming out here this evening. My name is Curtis Rodriguez Porter and I am chair for the City of Hartford's LGBTQ Plus Commission. And the commission would like to thank each and every one of you for being out here for our, a very historic initiative, which is the very first LGBTQIA Plus mayoral candidate for the city. So give that one of us. And it's during Pride Month, so happy Pride as well. And if I could please have my commissioners just stand up and give a wave, please, so folks know that you're here. <laughs> Commissioner Greg Chambers and Commissioner Andre Santiago. Thank you. And on behalf of all of our mayoral candidates, thank you, each and every one of you, for being here this evening and accepting the invitation. On behalf of the commission for being here, we greatly appreciate your presence, so thank you so much. I would like to introduce our moderator for this evening. His name is Lawrence Young. He is a great friend of mine, as well as a community member of ours. He lives here in the city of Hartford and is the vice president of Charter Oak Community Health Center here in Hartford. And he is also a former BART board member for the Hartford Gay and Lesbian Health Collective as well as a former young professional through the Urban League of Greater Hartford, former board member as well. And so he has accepted this uh, ask, and I, I and we greatly appreciate him for uh, his support with this forum and helping organize behind the scenes. So I would like to call to the podium this evening our moderator, Lawrence. Curtis was incorrect. I am still a young professional. Anyway, thank you, Commissioner Rodriguez Porter, for your kind words. Uh, before we begin, I want to set a few ground rules to ensure that we are we have an enriching, informative, and safe experience together this evening. Um, in respect of time, each candidate will have three minutes to respond to all questions. Our timekeeper, who is Commissioner Chambers, will uh, when, uh, when the candidate approaches the two-minute mark. He will give a signal, and uh, when he has 30 seconds remaining, he will also he will, he will stand, and then we'll uh, stop the remarks there. To give everybody an equal opportunity to speak, all candidates will be asked to stop speaking at that three-minute mark. For audience questions, the majority of this event will be audience-driven, so we really encourage you all to ask your questions and engage with the candidates. You all will have one minute to answer to ask your questions. Once your question is um, answered um, by the uh, candidates, please have a seat. There are no follow-up questions, and audience members are not allowed to go back and forth with candidates. We want to respect time and also respect our candidates. I want to remind you that this is a nonpartisan event, so cheering, jeering, booing, interrupting candidates or any other community members while they are speaking or excessive applause is not allowed. It is important to note that this event is not a debate, but an open space for community members to connect with, hear from, and share ideas with our mayoral candidates. Please use respectful and civil language when addressing the candidates and your fellow community members. Personal attacks or derogatory comments are not allowed here. Our goal this evening is to maintain a neutral environment focused on open dialogue and an exchange of ideas. I would like to encourage our mayoral candidates and the attendees here to engage in a constructive discussion to foster understanding and bridge gaps within our community. If anyone here tonight cannot adhere to these rules that have been set, you will be asked to leave. So now I'll start with the opening question. So we're going to go around, go down our candidate list. We can start um, with our Senator Farm Farm. We're going to go all the way to uh, Macaulay. And I want to, to, in your introduction, you'll have three minutes to answer this question. As a potential leader of our city, it is important to address the concerns and rights of all residents. Hartford has a vibrant LGBTQIA community that contributes to the city's diversity and cultural fabric. How do you plan to support and advocate for the LGBTQIA community in Hartford, ensuring their equal rights, inclusivity, and safety within the city? I don't want to sound presumptuous, and um, I'm only going to drop one name. Uh, I started my journey to become 
the servant representative for constituents in Hartford in 2007. And my campaign manager the whole time, who is near and dear to my heart, is probably one of the most polarizing people in the city, and that's Kevin Brookman. Several months after Mayor Sadara was elected, I got several calls from friends of mine saying, we are catching hell on the streets. So when people talk about how far we've come and how far we have to go, you know, bigotry, hatred is something that is in the heart. And you can't legislate the heart. But you can give people opportunities to get to know one another and people can have mutual respect. Uh, I'm a free speech absolutist. I don't know whether that's good or bad, but I believe in freedom of speech, freedom of expression, say whatever you want and then deal with the consequences of what you said. Because sometimes what you say can get you punched in the face. <laughs> people react to what you say, but it's better when people speak the truth of where they are because that's when conversations begin and understanding begins. And we need to begin to understand each other if we're going to arrive at the question about safety. Do you feel safe? That's not something I can sit around and say you're safe. Only you know whether you're safe or not. And so me as a, an administrator, as the mayor of Hartford, uh, I listen to a group of individuals who know exactly what they want and what they need. For me, that first place to interface would be the commission. And I'm glad to see the commission doing an event like this. Because it's, it's quite forward, if you will. I am a protected class. I want to be a constituent. I don't want to be a protected class. I want to represent constituents. You all are constituents. You are making headways around the world. I would not give up my goals for moving to the back of the bus to ask for something that you already have and are due. Excuse me, Lawrence, point of order. I'm finding it disruptive to stand, so I'd rather just raise my hand again. Absolutely. Right, no, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that. So uh, thank you so much for your answers and giving this introduction to Council Level Set where you all stand on this issue. I want to ask a follow-up question for everyone. Um, you can choose not to answer this one, but this is going to answer. All of you have the time to answer, but this is completely your choice. Um, we want to talk specifically about what initiatives or policies will you prioritize to address the unique challenges faced by the LGBTQIA plus community and those individuals? And how will you promote a more inclusive and accepting environment for all residents through these efforts? All right. Of all the communities I know in Hartford, it's been my observation that this is the one community you can absolutely be 100 with and keep it 100 and keep it real. In my community, there's a saying, we don't need any allies and we appreciate that you want to help us. But if you really want to help us, stay home and get out of our way and let us do what we do and don't be obstructionists. I am applying to be mayor of Hartford, which means I am applying to work for you. That's not an option. I work for you. I'm accountable to you. Whatever policies you think should be there, it is my job to help champion those policies. Whatever it may be. They had a press conference yesterday about the flooding in the North End. Bridget Prince came to me in January. We sat down in the meadows and she says, I need help. My words to her were, how can we work together to make it happen? I was neutral, to be honest with you. But she wasn't. You see, she was passionate. Everybody told us, you will fail 
Well, yesterday's proof that we didn't fail. You don't have to be out front to get things done. You have to be willing to do things. These are political decisions. These are a matter of, are we going to help you or not? If you have a problem, how can I help you solve that problem? If you're being discriminated against in school, let me know. I will come to the school and set things in order with you. It incenses me when I hear people are not being treated like constituents. I don't care who they are. Elected officials work for you. And whatever policies that you think need to be changed, we'll sit down, work on them, and then we will champion them as best we can. Thank you. Thank you all for those answers and those thorough, thoughtful, thorough, thorough, thoughtful responses. Now is your time. So, uh, all of those who have questions, do you have a, or do you have a uh, microphone over there? Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you have any questions, you can go over to the side to form a line over this area um, to ask questions to the candidates. Remember, you have one minute to ask your question. Uh, after that, you will hear the response. That if any of y'all that want to respond can do that. So, anyone, any takers that want to ask the question in this very safe space. <laughs> okay, so the form a line there, we can make that work. And, uh, and also, I have a few other questions that can get us going that hopefully will inspire you all to engage with the candidates, but this is a really, this is really your moment to hear things that are important to you, things that are impacting you, regarding the community. So we highly encourage you all to participate and engage in that. Is it on? Yes. Uh, when you brought up the issue of homelessness in Hartford, and I am well aware that many of the people in that situation are LGBTQ plus people. I've worked within that community for many years. There are also people who are not LGBTQ who are homeless in Hartford. So I want to put this all together. The shelter system in Hartford is not working. We have too many people who are living in parks, living under I-91, down in the North Meadows, very dangerous situation. As mayor, what would you do to get people housed? We don't need these people to have to be out on the street trying to find a place to lay down. What would you do? Thank you. I've had a lot of complaints about the shelter system as uh, it has been, as you referred to it. Um, and I even offered to go down and, you know, create chaos. But I was told, don't do that because if you do that, it'll just make it worse for us. So, uh, you know, there's gonna need to be some leadership and accountability. To me, there is no accountability without consequence. People talk about accountability all they want. They can talk about transparency all they want. If the impact of the action doesn't cause change, then there is no accountability. So to the degree that the shelter system is able to get away with some of the things that at least I've been told um, happens, it's just somebody looking the other way. There is no accountability. And that is tragic. It's one of the reasons I decided to run for mayor and keep running until I win. Because the people who have all the answers really are the ones sitting out in the audience, it's the ones outside. The conversations I've had with people who have been impacted and affected by homelessness, they actually have answers. But no one will listen to them. And that's the case all over the city. So you'd be surprised what you could get done if you listen to the people who are actually impacted by the problem. Just for 10 minutes, listen to them. And you might come up with a solution. Because I can come up with solution after solution after solution all day long. If it doesn't impact you and hit you where you are, it doesn't matter. It's just me sitting up here talking. What needs to be done can be determined and then you put it into action. You hold those accountable for the delivery of services that don't deliver by getting rid of them because they seem to be burdened by the uh, you know, responsibility of doing what they've been hired to do. 
It's really that old fashioned, it's really that simple. Accountability, hold people accountable for the services that they should be delivering. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ephraim Adams. I live in Hartford in the North End off of Albany Avenue. And earlier, one of you mentioned, I forget who, that our LGBT commission um, needs to be improved and diversified, right? As I look around this room, I see color. As I look around this room, I see gender, right? I see different orientations and all those things. Um, one of the things that struck me when I entered is that you keep saying LGBTQ plus AI, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, R, S, G, etc. We have a word for that. It's an umbrella term. It's called queer. All right. So until we diversify our commission, uh, what is your game plan um, as far as being uh, politicians and mayors and all the things? What is your game plan? as far as um, hearing the different diverse voices of our community, right? So I'm just gonna restate it again. Since our commission is not as diversified as we'd like in seeing color, in age, in race, and gender, what is your game plan as far as reaching out to people and hearing the different diverse experiences? Thank you. Um, it's been my observation covering Hartford City meetings for the last 40 years um, that a lot of the people that are appointed to things are appointed because they're going to toe the party line. It's unthinkable in a city of 120,000 that commissions aren't fully seated. The fact that you want to serve is all that they need to make you say, you know, to tell you no. Why? Well, I didn't choose you. Uh, I think the community best knows who should be on the commission. Mm -hmm. All we gotta do is listen. If you wanna serve, by all means, come and serve. And I shouldn't have to pay you to come. I shouldn't have to feed you to come. If I gotta do that, then you really don't wanna be there. There are people who want to represent every community. I serve on the film video commission. If it wasn't for David Grant, I don't think we'd have got done half of what we got done, which wasn't much. So, you know, you need people who want to serve and are willing to come and take the time. They are throughout the entire city. I hear them all the time. It, it's just the mayor gets to appoint these. I will appoint anybody that wants to serve. I will give you an opportunity to shine, excel, or fail. And until you fail, you haven't. So why would I not give you a voice? So send me who you think should be on the commission and uh, we'll make sure you have an opportunity to serve the city. It's your city. <laughs>